Hello, my name is Carl Mitchley and I am a member of the 10th Essex Living History Group. For the second of my mini tutorials showing the equipment of the British Tommy during World War I, we should be looking at some of the kit and equipment used or introduced during 1915. In this case represented as used by a soldier of the 1st 5th Durham Light Infantry. The 1st 5th DLI, a battalion of the Territorial Force, was sent to France in April 1915 and became part of 150th Brigade, the 50th Northumbrian Division. They fought at the Second Battle of Ypres and spent the whole of 1915 in the Ypres salient. Here we can see some of the equipment used by the British Army in 1915. The British, Ar British Army has just spent its first winter in the trenches and realised its cold weather equipment is inadequate. Many items of cold weather kit were quickly knitted by the women back in Blighty and items such as goat skin jerkins were issued to keep the men in the trenches warm. Most of the wool used in jerkins was brought from Australia and they are often seen in pictures taken throughout the war. Here we have the standard 1902 service dress jacket correctly badged for a private of the 1st 5th Durham Light Infantry. A tin of corned beef and some hardtack biscuits are sat on the Mark II iron ration bag, which replaced the japanned Mark I bag in 1915. Also seen is an early round tin of Oxo cubes. Below this are some early war bibles and prayer books as were printed and handed out as a free issue to any soldier who wanted them. Religious text was printed for all denominations serving with the British Empire armies. Below the religious booklets is the Princess Mary Christmas tin. Each soldier and sailor serving overseas during Christmas 1914 was supposed to be issued one as a gift from a grateful nation. Not all were issued in time for Christmas, so the scheme was rolled over into 1915. They contained a pack of tobacco, a pack of 20 cigarettes, various pictures of the royal family, as well as a Christmas card dated 1914 or 1915. Non-smokers and Empire troops were issued tins containing sweets and spices, amongst other small items. Below the tin we can see currency, both British and French. Although Ypres is in Flanders, Belgium, French currency was often used. The 1907 pattern bayonet is now missing its hook quill on, which were ordered to be ground off from May 1915. The left-hand side ammunition pouch now has a retaining strap to prevent ammunition accidentally falling out into the mud. Here we can see the infamous winter service dress cap, known as the Gore Blimey. Loathed by many, it omitted the strengthening wire seen in the 1905 service dress cap and had ear flaps which would pull down over the ears and tuck under the chin for warmth. Poison gas was first used in April 1915 by the Germans at the Second Battle of Ypres. Hence the gas rattle and the high post smoke hood with its protective first pattern satchel. Also visible is a jam tin improvised bomb as used to great effect at Gallipoli and a number 5 Mills bomb introduced just in time for the Battle of Luce in September 1915. Here we can see a close up of the third pattern ammunition pouch showing the retaining straps. Also shown is the individual first field dressing issued to every soldier from 1911 to the present day. Here we have a close up of this hypo smoke hood and to its right a medicated cotton pad respirator. On top of this protective goggles are seen to counter the effects of tear gas. On top of the valise is a Mark VI Webley .455 service revolver. First issued in 1915 the Mark VI would become the most issued sidearm to British and Empire troops of the war. Also visible is an early war green on active service envelope and a field service postcard. Post was vital to keep up morale and soldiers were encouraged to write home as often as possible. A letter placed into the mailbag would normally be delivered back in Blighty within 24 hours. At the top we can see the 10 pocket bomber's vest originally designed to hold a number 15 lemon bomb. They were still being used by some specialist bombers to hold a number 5 Mills bomb, well into 1915-1916. On top of the goatskin jerkin are a balaclava helmet and some woollen fingerless gloves as knitted by the women of Britain as comfort items for the troops. Hopefully you found this video useful. 
please like and subscribe and thanks for watching